September 9th, mega traffic, mega pollen and nectar flow. Even this left hand hive that's been a little bit more slow and quiet is rocking it today. Of course, both of the swarm hives are cranking full on. Top bar hive is also heavy traffic. Got rain forecasted for tomorrow and you can feel the humidity in the air. So I think they must feel it coming and uh, they're trying to make up for it in advance. They're still all through the holy basil and the sweet Thai basil. And I saw one in this buckwheat. Oh, there goes one. I've seen a few in this buckwheat. Which is just opening into flower. Interesting little thing to note, I, uh, when I did a foliar feed last week on the sweet corn blocks and also the buckwheat blocks here, I gave this bodacious sweet corn a few extra shots on that foliar because it wasn't a real strong foliar feed and I would love to see these come out and throw some corn at the end of the season. It would be nice to have a, uh, a late corn harvest. Um, and so interesting to note the difference here with the buckwheat that was included in that heavier foliar feed it's a little more mature and advanced than uh, the rest of this block and if you look down the line it's a uh, pretty noticeable difference all the way down so I just did a uh, final, well, what I expect will be a final foliar feed for the corn blocks here. May end up doing one more over in here. But the rest of these are all done. 
Um, I think I think I'm going to mow this corn, the sweet corn, down after I harvest out any seed corn that I'm saving and, you know, go through it. Um, I think I'm going to mow it down and then seed rye into it. And maybe some Austrian winter pea if I can get my hands on it and things work out for that. I'd love to have a nice lagoon like that in there. Um, uh, but uh, and, we'll uh, see uh, how while I was at it with the foliar feed. I hit this uh, block of clover, just the clover part in here. And I also hit this uh, last round of bodacious. I also did a quick uh, mow on this edge of it just to open up the light in there. I've been holding off on that because there's a lot of clover in here and the clover's in flower. But uh, I realized I wasn't seeing too many honeybees in it right now. And with the goldenrod and the buckwheat and the holy basil and all these other uh, crops, flowering and producing nectar and pollen, they're pretty intently focused on those. There's other clover around all over the farm that's open and uh, I suspect that by the time we get into the middle of October this will grow back and be in flower again anyway, especially given the, its proximity to foliar feeds. It's getting a lot of uh, overshot from foliar feeds and it had extra irrigation over the summer and it's part of why it's so dark and green and robust. Um, Anyway, I just thought I would share that I came in and uh, hit these with foliar. I hit that with foliar. It's been six days since I did the last foliar feed on that. Um, and I see it's running a little weak. Uh, so this block just isn't really up to par yet nutritionally. Uh, but we're getting there and uh, hopefully that foliar will give it another boost and help us push through and pull off a crop. Um, either way, those sunflowers are doing really well and that'll be a nice late pollen and nectar source of very high quality for the honeybees to take in and be uh, building and preparing their winter nest with. Um, to me that's equally as important as production uh, as far as sweet corn goes. Actually it might even be far more important. I love these little patches in between everything where the goldenrod pops out of and all these other wildflowers that come out throughout the different parts of the season. And I do love watching the chickens work through all these areas and eat all the insects and enjoy all the greens. I'm thinking that's the one that was born last night, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Prancing around already, I love it. So I don't often talk about it here, but uh, the neighbor across the street from me raises black Angus. And uh, so last night he had a uh, cow that was having trouble having her calf. He sort of commandeered me to come give him a hand. Helping her, uh, helping her birth it. So that was an interesting experience. I've seen cows born before. I've seen cows stuck and vets helped them out before. But those were in my younger years and I wasn't necessarily paying attention to the process. It was uh, interesting to be part of that process last night. And uh, I got him out here grazing. And uh, man, some beautiful pasture and beautiful cows and just a very peaceful setting. Um, I, I hope someday soon I can uh, I can get some cattle going. I'd love to have some cows and uh, raise some beef and integrate the grazing and foraging systems better into my operations. And uh, and be around the cows because they're uh, they're nice calm creatures. I love hearing these guys uh, calling in the distance when I'm out here working over on my farm. 
Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, get a shot of them. And, uh, share with my viewers. So, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Pharmacy Seeds Network.